Welcome to the video on the Young Modulus Practical. Now the Young Modulus of a material tells you how far it stretches when you put a certain force or stress on it. So we can say that the Young Modulus, capital E, why didn't they go for Y instead? That's just confusing. Anyway, is equal to stress over strain, where stress is F over A, strain is proportion of extension compared to original length. And so that gives us F over A, divided by delta L, you might use X, I use delta L, and so ultimately that gives us F L over A delta L. So that's our equation. So we wanna find the Young modulus of a material. So we're going to be changing the force, and obviously that's gonna be equal to tension in our string, and because we're obviously gonna change that with masses hanging on the end, that's gonna be equal to the weight that we hang off it. And we're going to be seeing how the extension changes. So ideally what you want is one of those beams at the top of your room. Uh, not everybody has these, so you might use a table and some pulleys, but you want a wire hanging off here. Now you're going to measure the original length of the wire with a meter rule, or you could use a tape measure. And before you start putting any weight in it as well, you also want to measure the diameter. And as per usual, we want to measure that in three places using a micrometer and find the mean. The uncertainty in your diameter is gonna be half the range of your values, or if they're all the same, I'd say the uncertainty is just the resolution of the micrometer, which should be 0.01 millimeters. So there's various ways that you can do this, but the way that I do it is you use a vernier scale with a reference wire, and we wanna put a tension bar on that as well, basically just a little bit of weight to keep it taut. Now, what is a reference wire? Well, it's a, refer well, it's a wire of exactly the same, material and width and all that jazz. We want them to be identical. And then we attach those to the vernier scale. And then we add a tension bar onto the reference wire. And then we add our slotted masses onto the wire that we want to change the length of. Now with a vernier scale, you'll have your numbers and then one will slide past the other. And then that will not only give you the number of millimeters that one of them has moved, but also tenths of millimeters as well. So the vernier scale will probably have a resolution of 0 0.1 millimeters. But what we'll find is that that's not a great resolution, but that does allow us to talk about uncertainties in a minute. So why do we have a reference wire? Why do we need that? Well, it's to ensure that any ambient changes, that is temperature, that kind of thing, are mitigated. In other words, the effect of them is reduced. So if the temperature increased in the room, then that means that your wire would stretch, so the extension would increase even with the same force on it. But by using a reference wire, we're ensuring that both of them stretch just as much. And so even if the temperature increased and the wire stretched, the extension shouldn't change. We only want the extension to change due to the weight. So we want to add slotted masses to wire to increase force and therefore stress. Uh, I probably should have said here as well, ensure scale is zeroed before adding masses. Now, in theory, but what I do is that I add 100 grams to make sure it's taut and then I zero it. And we do want to add 100 grams at a time. And we want to record the extension every 100 grams until wire breaks. Safety, well, ensure masses are close to the ground, and that's because falling masses, when the wire breaks, can cause damage or harm. Uh, on that note, we can put foam or carpet underneath, because when your wire snaps, there's a fair amount of energy in there, so it could actually send the wire going flying into your eye. So we say wear goggles to avoid wire hitting eyes. You don't want the wire going bang into your eye like that. So you're going to be recording mass in kilograms and you're gonna be recording the extension. Chances are it's gonna be times 10 to the minus three meters. Now, when you plot a graph of this, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Yes, obviously force is our independent variable or masses. And so you might wanna put force or mass on the x-axis, but actually, yeah, we can put the independent variable on the x-axis, but actually in this case, it makes more sense to put force up the y-axis like that and the extension on the x-axis. 
Now our points are not gonna give us a perfectly straight line. They might go up like that, but then eventually they'll start going over like that. And to find the force, we multiply the mass by G. But if we do that, you have to plot 0 0.98, 1 1.96 Newtons, etc. Actually, we're just making life difficult for ourselves. So it's much better if we just, in reality, plot mass up the y-axis. And then if we take our equation, that's obviously then MGL over A delta L. Okay, so our graph looks like this, but we are only concerned with the straight bit, the proportional mode. Yes, it goes around like that, doesn't it? But this here is the limit of proportionality and we can't really do any analysis from that point onwards. So it's the gradient of this that we're interested in. And because that's equal to M over L, here's M over L here. So that means that our young modulus is gonna be equal to the gradient times whatever's left, G L over A. So there you go. We only have to multiply by G once instead of having to multiply all our masses and then trying to plot them. Bit of a nightmare that is. So there's going to be an uncertainty and that's going to be in our delta L, isn't it? But you will have to decide on where the limit of proportionality is. That's going to change how you draw your line of best fit and therefore line of worst fit as well. So the percentage uncertainty in E right at the end is gonna be equal to the percentage uncertainty in the gradient. And as per usual, and as per usual, we get that from line of worst fit, take away line of best fit, divided by line of best fit times 100. So let's say that that's my line of worst fit there. But because we're calculating our young modulus from the gradient and GL over A, that means that we're going to have to add the uncertainty with this, but there's no uncertainty with G. There's hardly any uncertainty with the original length because it's say a meter long, but the resolution is a millimeter. So that's gonna be like 0.1% depending on what the resolution of your ruler is. And so I'd say that the only other thing is gonna be your percentage uncertainty in the cross-sectional area. And obviously that's going to be two times the percentage uncertainty in your diameter. You can do repeats, you could do this experiment three times, but there's gonna be a lot of variation in your readings from one wire to the next, so just be ready for that. It's up to you whether you think it's worth it or not. So that's it, I hope you find it helpful. If you did, leave a like. If you wanna see me doing it in real life, then click on the card and it'll take you to the video that I made for Marsbury Science. Click the bell button if you wanna be notified of when I make a new video. And if you've got any suggestions, then please put it in a comment down below. Always appreciate you guys' ideas. And I'll see you next time.